Hello and welcome everybody. Janet Becker's here from Romance Your Tribe Radio and I'm so excited to introduce you to my beautiful friend, Milana Lishinsky. Hey, Milana. Hey, Janet. It's great to be here. I'm excited to talk to Australia. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited too because when we, we first met in, well, what we thought was Hollywood. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, you thought so too? Yes, I know. <laughs> we, were, we were sort of sold, yeah, what we thought was a bit much bigger um, opportunity, but it was a really good adventure anyway, where we were both being on the set of a documentary. And um, for me, the thing that was the biggest highlight out of the whole experience was meeting Milana because there was a lot of hanging around, wasn't there, when you're actually... <laughs> filming yes. documentaries so we sort of became bffs and and hung out in the back of the studio just catching up on everything that we were both passionate about and so much of that was about business and making a difference to people making a difference to people wasn't it it was it was awesome yes and i remember that you and i both kind of were a little bit awestruck or starstruck when that uh, woman from the movie E.T. showed up. Yeah. You know, pictures. So that was the other it's thing that star. we, yeah, <laughs> that was, it was awesome. It was like mini tiny Hollywood, right? Hollywood yeah. experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can, uh, we can share it that way if we want yeah. to. <laughs> yeah. So I've invited Milana along today because, ah, oh, look, I'm going to let Milana tell you a bit more about her story. But when I first became aware of Milana, it was when she was working on recurring revolution, when she was helping people with recurring incomes. She was really known in the go as a go-to space in in tele summits. Like you invented the tele summit model, didn't you? Like you yes, were, I did. Yeah, <laughs> so they tell me. It happened here, <laughs> folks. This was ground zero. So, yeah. you know, inventing the telly summits and really I can remember um, when I first started out getting CDs that were by you on how to make a membership site. Like this was way back right at the very beginning. Um, so Milana's been there but you've managed to always stay ahead of the curve. You've always managed to... Um, you know, see, an, see a different way of doing things and then working out how to do it and then doing it incredibly well and then seeing the next opportunity. So it's not as if you're, you know, skitting from one thing to another. You're looking at the way things are done and how can we do them better and really think outside the box. So um, that's, that's kind of where you've got to at the moment, isn't it? You've got a, a different sort of phase that you're going through, that you're really developing new ways of doing business. Yeah, um, well, time, times keep changing. People are starting to be more savvy online as, as consumers. Mm. Uh, you know, those old marketing tricks where you could post, um, I don't know, like, get this now or this web page disappears in 20 minutes. Like yeah. That doesn't work anymore. I used to, like, I literally remember buying a product and there would be like a pop-up window that would say, uh, this offer goes away in 20 minutes, this page will disappear. So you better buy now, right? Like those pressure tactics. I think people will look at it now and say, oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It disappears, so I'll move on to somebody else. I don't think that people are as, easily influenced by those tricks and so as people and you know consumers got savvier and smarter they also got more skeptical mm. and so they also have a lot more choices right when yeah. i was starting out back in 2001 um i heard the words life coach and business coach for the very first time and so i was intrigued by that um, and today I went to Walmart because it's like literally two streets away from my house. So it's an easy stop to, to get uh, something that I need quickly. And I saw a cashier and his tag name tag said uh, um, John and his last name. And then it said coach. Oh, right. and, I, and I asked him, what do you mean by that? He goes, oh, like I just coach other associates here. Oh, associates. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, so 
the word coach has now penetrated the most um, unreachable layers of population, <laughs> so to speak, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also coaching, and I don't know how many people are listening and watching your podcast who are coaches and who are interested in coaching, uh, but it's now blended. There is no longer a very clear line between coaching and every other business owner offering coaching. So right. you could be a professional coach or you could be an accountant offering coaching, right? You could just decide one morning that you want to offer coaching. So that the marketing, internet marketing and coaching industry have blended. So now it's impossible to tell who is who, who and what is being offered uh, when and where. It's the overwhelm is unprecedented. Yeah, and that's, that's a good point. I hadn't actually thought of that, Milana. You're right, because it used to be very much to be consider yourself a coach. You, you know, you would have developed and learnt a whole suite of tools to to coach to actually walk people through a step. And so, I resisted calling myself. That was my alarm. Sorry. It is so early oh, in the morning. My alarm like, just went off. Outside, it's <laughs> the sounds are, you know, you're like in a spa somewhere. <laughs> it is. I've got a beautiful one that wakes me up to bird sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah it's, it's very early in the morning here in Australia. <laughs> Sorry. But, um, yeah, back to the coaching. We just got disrupted by my early morning alarm there. Is, yeah, it, I know I resisted even referring to any of the services I did as a coach or in a, in a coaching business for years and years and years because I felt that you had to have qualifications. It was sort of, you know, didn't feel having the right to say that. But interestingly, um, I've been calling our business a coaching business and a training business for years now because that's what people started calling, calling me and calling us. So for people who are listening who are in that coaching field, this is a really good distinction to have now that it's you're not one or the other. You're a blend, which I think can be can be quite liberating for a lot of people in the coaching space, actually. Well, it can be liberating, but also there's a lot of resistance, especially from people who have completed coach training schools yeah. and do feel kind of like, well, how dare you call yourself a coach if you haven't put in the time and the mastery that I put into in, you know, in my life, um, in my career. So I can totally understand both sides. But the thing is that the market wants what the market wants. Mm. The market wants this person who just sold you a Facebook uh, ads training to also coach you. And so that's how suddenly you, you a Facebook ads expert, now become, become a coach, right? So that's kind of like, you know, you could call it training, you could calling, you could call it support, but the word coach has now become so general and generic that I used to say that I um, started my business working out in coaching industry. And now I can't even say that because what is a coaching industry? What the heck is a coach? Right. Is there a coaching industry? What is it? And where does the coaching industry starts? Or ends and everything else begins, right? So it's kind of gotten really, you know, it, it, there's a lot of blending going on. Yeah. And so if we, if we look at those changes that you're seeing in the industry now, let's now look, turn that around and we'll have a look at the fa what you're doing now. So, and then we can talk about, especially when it comes to the coaches, about how um, this can this can it, they can apply because you're now focusing on the simplicity circle. Yes. So would you mind describing what is what is the simplicity circle, and then we might dive a little bit into how that's come around, and then we'll circle back to to the the changes in the industry. Does that sound okay? Totally. Well, so. Simplicity Circle was really born out of me suddenly seeing, you know, I walked away from my business last year. It was a seven-figure business. Some things were not really working for me 
in the company with my partner, with my business partner. Um, I started getting a little bit restless. You know, I get bored <laughs> a lot if the business doesn't stimulate my creative juices. And wow. so I walked away. And then I spent six months kind of, I don't know if I was hibernating, I was researching, I was looking, I was doing a lot of self-exploration. Um, but it, what was starting to happen is that I started seeing how growing a business can cause, you know, stress, frustration, can mm -hmm. take away from happiness and peace and from profitability. So I, this is when I discovered the idea of simplicity entrepreneurship, which is what Simplicity Circle is really focused on um, today. And, uh, you know, simplicity entrepreneurship is really a business growth strategy based on keeping your business and structure as simple as possible. It's also a mindset, right? Consciously Mind. making choices that focus on simplicity. Um, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people who are on the brink of a burnout and they've built such a monster of a business that they cannot even walk away from it. A lot of people told me, I wish I were you, that I could just walk away, but I have commitments, clients, my team, I built all of this, like I can't walk away from that. And so simplicity entrepreneurship is really a way to grow your business that doesn't cost you your independence, your mind, your health, your relationships. And mm. like oh, look, and I would be, I would, I would be, I think it would be a very healthy bet for me to be able to say that the majority of people who are listening to us today, they're, the reason why they're exploring about how to build their tribe, how to build their business online is because they're not looking for complexity, is they're looking for simplicity because it is about freedom. But the reality is once you start learning these new concepts, you start going down this track, it can get so overwhelming. It can feel incredibly intimidating that um, it's very easy to lose what, how you described as the happiness in your business. Yeah. yeah. And, and the problem is that there is really no way to tell which way to grow your business, which direction to grow your business into, which marketing strategies are going to work for you. There is no way to discern all the advice and all the information that comes at you, which is why Simplicity Circle um, is, you know, has such an amazing purpose right now. I'm so excited about it because I yeah. get to help people to tell, you know, this is the direction that you clear, you know, look at your results. I do um, several uh, tools and assessments in, in the program that people uh, come into. And then we look at their results and say, it, it tells you right here that these marketing strategies are not going to work for you. So why are you investing so much time, um, you know, into, in that direction, right? Yeah, brilliant. And, and, and instead, this is what you should be focusing on because it is aligned with your natural skills, your natural abilities, right? So build your business around your natural abilities. I call them super skills because when you use your super skills, your results come with ease. Oh, absolutely. Oh, you are talking, talking my language. Well, let's go into, um, let's go into some steps that people can implement to be able to look at their business and to look at simplifying. And just before we do that, I thought it might be nice to put a little bit of a frame around, you know, this the feeling of, you know, being so, your business taking so much of your life over. A lot of times people will look at a business and they will go, oh, look, they're amazingly successful. They've got it all together that's what I want. Um, not really seeing behind the curtains that this is a person who is so burnt out. And I know that there will be a lot of people who are listening here that will be at different phases in their business. And they're quite often looking at the phase above them or the person above them and thinking, oh, they've so got all this business stuff down pat. But I just wanted to revisit like where you've come from is you haven't come from business to start with. You kind of had to come into this sort of area from um, from from a musician. So you were you were traveling from from the Ukraine. Is that correct? 
Yes, yes. I was, uh, when, by the time I came to America, I was 19 years old and I was already uh, a diploma music teacher, classical music teacher. So right. I, <laughs> I, you know, in Ukraine, the education system was a little different. So by 19, I already had graduated with a four year music um, education degree. Right. That. I was a kid and I was ready to teach other kids. <laughs> Um, but yes, I was definitely not a, um, you know, somebody who was ready to do mark. I didn't hear the word marketing until I was in my thirties. Right. <laughs> that was 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. um, what drew you into the business? Well, I wanted to stay home with my daughter. She was, uh, born in 2000 and while I was pregnant, I was, you know, starting to explore this thing called the internet. You know, it was like years ago and the internet was just starting to boom. Um, you know, I, and um, I couldn't find good daycare for my daughter when she was born. And so I slowly, slowly, slowly ended up um, being a work at home mom. Started out by creating websites for companies and then discovered this idea of coaching and coaches started hiring me to create their websites. And so that became my niche at that time. Excellent. And That's the more websites I created, the more I learned about how to use their website to get clients. And I started, I, I don't know if there was something creative about marketing. The way I saw marketing was that it's an opportunity for me to create something cool. And I'm yeah. always up for creating something cool, right? Um, I think a lot of people see marketing as something that they have to do to push and to sell and, you know, like dirty marketing tricks. I always saw it as an opportunity to educate people, to create value for them and to share something innovative, like a framework that I imagined in my head yeah. of how to organize different ideas, you know? So marketing doesn't have to be dirty. <laughs> oh, you know, and it's so refreshing to hear somebody else say that because, um, I feel exactly the same way because my, I'm was an artist. You know, I had an art gallery was my first business. Oh, I didn't yet, know that. Since I've started this track of my business, I very rarely actually create a lot of art, and um, and people have said to me, "Look, that's a big change. Like, where is your creative outlet?" And and it took me a while to realize, you know what, actually marketing for me is a huge creative outlet i get a really similar yes. creative return um from thinking about some creative ways to get a message out there and to involve people in the process of the marketing so that's fantastic to hear somebody else say it it's so true um so if we i, I wanted to just backtrack to look at a little bit of your story because i know that we're going to look at the process here now for you to be able to grow your business by simplifying. And you said there at the, at the beginning about happiness and you said there at the beginning about, you know, your, what's your real sort of like superpowers? What's, what's you really good at? So I, you can't even start looking at those steps without getting a feeling for what is happiness for you? Why are you doing it to start with? So thank you for sharing that bit of your story first so that we can we can re people can really understand as we go through these steps where you come from when you apply it to your business so um yeah. and, and you know what's interesting is that I, I didn't realize that I was unhappy in my previous business until my body told me so I started really? panic attacks and I didn't know what they were and what I wow. like the whole idea about anxiety I'd never it just was never part of my life. I, yeah. I kind of ignored all the commercials about anxiety and I didn't know what it was. And I started having panic attacks. And for the last two years of running that business, I was experiencing these, what I used to call episodes. I didn't know they were called panic attacks. Um, and so when I discovered that these were panic attacks and that they are a result of anxiety, um, I also realized that I'm not only anxious, I'm also very unhappy in my business. Um, and so I sold my half to my business partner and I went solo again because I was in business. I had been in business for 17 years. It was only the last three years that I was in a partnership with someone, um, that 
change the dynamics of my business. Mm. There's something that started changing. My lifestyle changed. My schedule started changing. You know, and so, yeah, happiness was nowhere part of it, but I didn't know it, which is the most fascinating thing to me. It took my panic attacks to tell me that I'm not happy. Wow. <laughs> we just going through the motions every day, waking up and doing the work, doing the work. Yeah. Doing the work. The business needed me. My clients needed me. My, my team needed me. And it was only when I found the panic attacks to be unbearable any longer, I just made a decision to walk away from a seven-figure business. Wow. That's, that's huge, isn't it? And for people who are listening, I think this is a really important first step for you to do is, is really having a look at, are you happy? Like what, are you getting joy or are you going through the motions? And um, cause you really do not want to have to get to the stage where Milana got to where her body is screaming at her to say, something's got to change. Something's got to change. So let's have a look now at, at, at simplifying your business because I love how you say you can grow your business by simplifying, which can be a bit counterintuitive. So for people who are listening, for them to be able to take some action this week, what can be some steps that they can be applying to their existing business and to grow their business while making it so much simpler? Yeah. Well, the answer is actually very simple, Janet. Of course. Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> The way that you grow uh, through simplicity as your growth strategy. A lot of people were confused about it when I first started talking about it. And I realized that it's, it's almost too obvious, but most people still don't know how to do that. Um, you can, you know, use simplicity. Simplicity can help you grow your business uh, by way of removing 80% of things that you do that don't pay off and things that don't make you happy, right? Right. Um, and as soon as you remove those things, what happens is the friction, the resistance that you've experienced in your business, it falls away. The question is, what is the 20%? Most people don't yeah. know what that is. Um, you know, I talk to people who say, oh, I know what my natural abilities are. I'm a writer. But then I say, okay, well, great. So is your writing generating your income for you and they go well not really because and they'll go into this whole thing of why they haven't really been profitable and the truth is that it's one thing to know what your natural abilities are and what you enjoy doing and it's a whole other thing when you think about how to translate your natural abilities into a profitable business right mm. you need to be a little bit more strategic it's not about well i love writing therefore i will be writing more and therefore i'll be making more money if it was that simple, um, I don't think that business coaches would exist, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like more um, digging a little deeper. Like the kind of things that I talk about in my programs um, have to do with discovering your big idea. What is your big idea? What is the unique hook or angle for your business or for your products and programs that allow you to stand out? Uh, and then we talk mm -hmm. about um, things like your business model, what are your products and programs that you need to be creating? How do you price them? You know, most people take price point out of thin air, but that is not a strategic way to determine your pricing. And what happens is if you price yourself incorrectly, you're going to, again, hit resistance from your clients, potential clients, and in your own business. And then the marketing strategy. You know, every person has a unique marketing personality, which we determine once the people start working with me, we'll look at what is your marketing personality? Are you a teacher, builder, connector, or champion? And right. what does that mean in terms of marketing methods that you need to choose? And what is your marketing strategy overall looks like based on your marketing personality? So you may know what your natural abilities are, but it, most people don't know how to translate that into a profitable business. And so that's what I love doing with people because suddenly their eyes are open and they say, oh my God, I've been building my business using all the methods that don't fit my marketing personality. And so they right. it becomes so much easier. It's almost like waking up and getting paid for just being you. Which is... Which is the thing when we, when we come back into romance and your tribes, that's what sets you as that tribal leader is 
people are going to be drawn to you and your energy and your vibe, which will come from doing the things that you love. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be the most charismatic. You know, you can be dull as dishwater, but still you're going to attract those right people to you. Not that anybody here is dull as dishwater. Is <laughs> because, you know, because you're, you're doing those things that are, that are in your natural flow. That are in exactly. Yeah. And, and what happens, unfortunately, a lot is when people start their businesses or if they decide to start growing a little faster, they start looking at other people who are successful. Mm. Like for the longest time, I looked at several people that you and I both know, you know, they're high level entrepreneurs in our industry. And I wanted to do what she did. And I spent 11 years attempting that business model. And every year I thought, well, maybe I just need to do it this way or this way or that way. But it never worked. When I started creating the simplicity um, program and developing these tools for my clients, I started, I looked at my marketing personality and her marketing personality and realized that we are opposites to the point where I, I feel like I've wasted 11 years trying to master something that wasn't natural to me to begin with. And so... I gave myself permission to stop doing it. That's, you know, and that, that's, yeah. yeah. So this is um, a few the things that you've said here a few times is it's a very much a matter of really looking at what's working for you already and what's, and what's your core way of, you know, of marketing and doing business. And we'll explore that a little bit more is, but it sounds a lot of it is making the decision to say no to let things go. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It's kind of like having your own filters, a series of filters that allow you to see which direction to go into. And even, you know, like technology changes all the time. Tomorrow, today it's Facebook ads and Facebook groups. Tomorrow it may be a completely new tool and new yeah. strategy. And w when you know what you are, um, you know, when you have a tool to discern the right way for you to focus your marketing around, you are going to know whether to use that strategy at all or not. Uh, and if you do choose to use it, then how to adapt it to your super skills, to your natural abilities, right? Um, I, I'm not a social person. I'm definitely, I'm more introverted. And so I kept thinking to myself that I can't use social media. And here I am, I'm running a group called Simplicity Circle on Facebook. And I have, you know, almost 1,500 people uh, in the matter of just a few months. People just flocked to the group based on the message that I was sharing. And so I was confused. Why do I enjoy that? And turns out it's because I have adopt, adapted the use of social media that works with my marketing personality. Like a lot of people will do different things on social media. Some people will post pictures. Other people will go into other people's, people's groups and connect and private message and get clients that way. Um, and I do things differently. And everybody has something that they need to know about themselves, uh, about their core drivers and core um, purpose of what they do, uh, of why they do what they do, right? Mm -hmm. And when you understand it, then it's going to be immediately obvious to you what marketing strategies to use, what products to create, and how to adjust them so that they work for you, right? I love it. So um, can we just briefly go over the four different um uh, you, you know, your personality types, I suppose, or your ways of approaching business so that we can then have a look at uh, just a, a couple of things that people can think about so that they can analyse the way that they're approaching what they're doing in business and see if these are the things that they can help to decide about doing differently. Um, so what were the four? The four yeah, so, there? and, you know, they're like labels essentially, but there's so much more behind each oh, one. Of course, absolutely. Right? But the, the labels are teacher, builder, connector, and champion. Excellent. Um, and if you are a teacher and you try to build your business like a connector, you're going to struggle. So my personality, my marketing personality is builder uh, followed right. by teacher. And so that combination build a teacher is what I do. And all the strategies that I use in marketing, all the ways that I use social media, 
all the things I do when I work with joint venture partners, they have to do with, you know, builder, which means I'm building something, I'm creating something and teaching teacher I'm teaching. So I'm motivated by, you know, disseminating the mystifying information. Um, and so there are certain marketing methods that go along with each one, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, uh, you know, a brief description of it, but I go a lot deeper in into it when I work with clients because you might look at some marketing strategies and say, well, I want to do, I want to blog. I love writing. And so you can spend the next five years blogging and not make a dollar. Yeah. Right. So how do you do that? How do you really bring out your marketing genius by using your, um, what you know about yourself as a, as a person, right? Yeah. Can we have a look at the other two? Because I suspect um, that they are ones that I have, that I have as my strengths. Um, I have a, I have a uh, sense of you as being a connector. Right. And like maybe that. a champion. It's hard to tell, um, uh, you know, until you, you take the, the assessment. But um, connectors are those who really love connecting with people, not necessarily networking. A lot of people misunderstand it. Like, well, I don't like networking. Well, you could be connecting during a networking meeting or you could be connecting one on one with people right. uh, or in a small group or over the phone or by Skype. Or you are naturally drawn to connecting people. You are you deep you get deep satisfaction from when you introduce people to each other right that's that's about connecting um you also can be connecting ideas not necessarily people you can be connecting ideas right Excellent. and the other and one which was the um the champion is that when you're shining the light on other people so that could be part of it, but a lot of champions are, so there's a champion who is very extroverted and there is a champion who is introverted and right. it doesn't matter, right? Uh, one is more of a coach. Another one is more of a, um, uh, you know, speaker from stage and exerting that energy at people. Um, they inspire people through telling stories. They, you know, like you know immediately when you hear somebody speak from stage if they are a champion or a teacher or a connector or a builder. And yes. see, notice that I'm not saying that if you're a teacher, you cannot speak from stage. If you're a builder, you cannot speak from stage. You absolutely can. I've done my own live events for years. I just was being a builder and a teacher. I was not a champion or a connector, right? Yeah. Well, that's, that's fantastic. So for people who are listening for you to be able to take action now, you know, is think about those four types. And of course, you know, connect with Milana because that's how you'll be able to really dive down deeper to see really what those four are. And then have a look at the way that you're approaching business. And I can tell you just from my own experience recently that I had built my business on connecting. I had built it on doing teleseminars, on connecting people with people who can help them. Absolutely in the flow, absolutely loved it. But I was influenced by what I was seeing other people doing, thinking this is time consuming. I should be backing out of the business a bit and systemizing things a lot more. So I'm systemizing, so, you know, I'm moving myself out of it. I got so bored. <laughs> yes. That's yeah. That's why I'm doing this podcast again because I love the connecting. I love the talking to people and connecting people with the right person that's going to be able to help them. So that right, like that's what you that's, your, that's what you naturally do. And so that's the first thing is to pay attention. What do you naturally do mm. uh, when left to your own devices? What do you naturally tend to do? Like I find myself organizing information into teachable formulas and systems, right? right. That's just what I, um, I have an idea and I'll just, I can do this at the wee hours of the day. I can do this when I'm sleepy, when I have a headache. I'll, this is what I naturally do. It doesn't require a lot of energy. Uh, put me on stage at wee hours in the morning and I'll probably have a panic attack. <laughs> oh, there you go. So that's, right. um, that's a really nice way for us to finish off in terms of what can people do um, this week. So my challenge for people listening is this, this week is really have a good look at your business and think about, you know, what actually does 
make me the money and what doesn't. And then I love Milana's um, concept of the four types when it comes to then looking at that in the way that what, what are you doing in your marketing? What is, where's your natural energy go? What, what can you easily do in the wee hours of the morning, such as Milana is talking about, so that you use all of the tactics in the way that's really going to use what comes natural to you for your strengths. And the other question to ask yourself is, where do you find yourself pushing? That's a really important um, right. question. Where do, you, where do you find yourself pushing or working too hard to get to results? And maybe those are the things that will give you a clue in terms of what you need to stop doing. Though, you know, finding those 80% of things that you should stop doing, right? Because it's not just about where are you making most money from. Like, I made most of my money from product launches, but it doesn't mean that I should be doing product launches. It just means that whatever was working at that time um, was somehow connected to my super skills. But I'm tired of doing product launches, so now what, right? So now I have to look at what super skills or what natural abilities was I using in my product launches that I can now translate into a non-product launch oriented business because I'm exhausted from yeah. launches, right? I'm burnt out. I want a... Uh, I want an easy marketing strategy, right? Yeah. To translate what it is that has worked for me in launches and apply it in other areas of my marketing. Yeah. That's fantastic. And I love the idea that means you're not being locked in to a particular strategy or a way of doing things. You can be taking what your, your, your core strengths are. So yeah. once you understand what your core motivation is or your core driver behind everything you do um that that one thing that you get enormous satisfaction from that you can do in the wee hours of the morning yeah you can apply that in any marketing strategy you're just gonna do it in a way that feels easy and simple to you yeah i love it so the challenge that that i give to you dear listeners <laughs> is let's take this into action so the challenge that I give you now is, first of all, you know, I love the surreal distinctions that Milana's given us today. And so I'd love for you to be able to share. And you can do this in a couple of ways. You, If you're watching this on the, on the website and you're watching the, the video here, just scroll down below and leave a comment and, and share with us, like, what is it? Like, do, which, which of those four types do you suspect that you are and also what is it that you just do really naturally like what is that thing that you can be doing in the early hours of the morning that feeds your energy that comes really naturally I'd really love to hear from you so you can share it there you can come over to the Facebook page and you can share there as well just or send us an email and one of the things I would really love you to do is Milana has you know, taking some wonderful time today. She's here because she absolutely loves what she does. And, you know, and we're sharing at the beginning about how she gets to help so many people to create simplicity. So one of the most rewarding things that you can do for, for Milana is to give her feedback as well. So um, go and um, we'll, I'll share in a minute where you can go to find Milana, but go to her website, go and find her on Facebook, Go and join the Simplicity Circle and give some feedback on the aha that you got from today and share, you know, what it is that really is the, the, that core thing that you do really, really well that you can bring over into all of your marketing and to building your business. So, Malana, what's the best way for people to be able to, um, to contact you and to keep in touch and learn more? I would say if you go to simplicitycircle.com forward slash get started, It'll get you started in the entrepreneurship world. It'll it'll give you the uh, uh, the business assessment where you can see how much just how much complexity you have in your business right now. It'll also give you access to my free Simplicity Circle community on Facebook. So that's the best place to go: simplicitycircle.com/slash/get started. I love it. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for your time, Alana. I'm exceptionally grateful for you to spend this time with us. And for everybody that's listening, thank you for, your, for trusting us with your time. And I can't wait to hear what changes you're making to your business to simplify um, and really grow your business through simplicity. So thank you. Bye.